Directly we seek thee, O Lord, our actions by the holy inspirations, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may always begin from thee, and by thee be happily ended through Christ our Lord. Now we proceed with the Petroleum and Other Minerals Development Prohibition of Onshore Hydraulic uh, Fracturing Bill 2016. Uh, we're resuming on Amendment uh, 1. And well, if we can. Uh, I noticed that a further amendment was submitted yesterday to this bill. Uh, now, I believe in debating everything to the fullest extent, whatever people want to say on bills. But it is a very unusual. Well yeah. But I, I really want to ask the last Cam Corley about the precedent here. Uh, because, to my knowledge, uh, we are always given a deadline for amendments that we, you know, it's often difficult to meet. Uh, and now we have an amendment submitted in the middle of a report stage. Uh, well after that, uh, well after that uh, deadline. So, uh, I'd like that explained to me because if, if that is setting a precedent whereby we can put in amendments from now on in the middle of a report stage, I'd be very happy actually, right? But I just want to know: is that the precedent we're setting? Because e either we have rules and procedures around this which apply, or we don't. Uh, and I'd like to know what, because this is unprecedented in my six years in the Dáil, that uh, after, well after a deadline uh, has passed, that new amendments can be submitted. It may be somewhat unusual, but uh, just to give you the background, uh, the amendment was submitted uh, the day before yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, well, it was submitted, and it was an amendment to amendment, but it was more appropriate uh, on the advice that it should be an amendment, and it dovetails with the amendments that are being uh, debated, and uh, there have been precedents in the past, uh, but it's not breaking uh, any rules. So, uh, yes, it is your amendment. And, um, to explain the background in our putting the amendment, because it did follow on the early report stage debate, which we thought was going to conclude uh, last Wednesday evening. And in a sense, I think Deputy Boyd Barrett, from my mind, uh, did the House some service, if not the people in the gallery that time, in terms of having a further extensive debate. We were not unable to get to his vote on the issue about whether we should have offshore exploration. And I, in my contribution, both at committee stage and at report stage, we would consistently been making this point, effect amending, in effect, the amendment the Deputy Boyd Barrett is pushing, to just widen that, uh, what he's seeking to achieve, an end to offshore exploration for shale gas, to a shale oil or gas to exclude it to other petroleum licenses. And that's something we debated at great extent through committee stage and report stage. And I think on that basis, the amendment is not coming a surprise. It's not it's different to the debate we've had. But it's looking to press the point, given that we're back here this morning. I didn't expect us to be. I thought we were going to We had hoped the debate would have concluded last Wednesday, Wednesday night. But given that Deputy Boyd Barrett, um, in my mind, gladly uh, extended this debate to this morning, I wanted to be able to press that point, because it's an important issue for our party in terms of what sort of offshore exploration he wants or others want, might yeah. want to see happening. Yeah, just one final clarification. I have no difficulty. I, I, I just want to stress that. I have no difficulty uh, with this. But my point is about procedure. It's not about the content. It's about the procedure. Because I, I want to understand how, from now on, because this is the precedent we're setting, from now on, in the midst of report stage, uh, we can submit amendments. That's the precedent that's being set. I'd be very glad if we can. 
Because to my mind, that makes it even, even more dynamic process, but that has never, ever been allowed in my six years in the Dáil. Right? So I want to know exactly, precisely, what was the procedure that allowed the deadline to be waived, the deadline which applied to every one of us, because following the debate last week, I would have put further amendments. And there was stuff that even was raised with me by uh, fracking campaigners last night, which I would have put in an amendment about. I get your point. So, but I want to know, yeah, well, I'll... Count Corla, what was the procedure through which this happened? Was it just submitted and just accepted? Did you have to go to the Count Corla and make a special case? What were the okay, rules that allowed yeah, yeah. the deadlines to be broken? Can that be explained to me? The, the, as, I, as I said earlier, it was submitted, and I realise that you have no issue with the amendment itself as the principle of it. Uh, it was submitted as an amendment to our amendment, and it was felt that it was more fitting as an amendment to stand on its own within the group. And the Concorda. The con it's not the, the, it, it was submitted as an amendment to amendment. It's not. And what, sorry. Can't call it, I'm reading it. Deputy, you have to listen to me as well. But it's not. And I listen. I li sorry. I listen, I listen attentively to you, and you also have to listen to me. When it was submitted as an amendment to an amendment, it was felt that it was more suitable as an amendment to stand alone within the group. The Concorda uh, gave the approval, and that's where it rests. So we have to move on. The Concorda. The Concorda. No, I'm not saying that. In this particular case, the Concorda uh, gave the approval. So we'll, 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 we'll take it. We're moving on. Uh, we now must deal with an, the amendment uh, as part of the group, uh, one to five inclusive. It was, it was um, proposed by Deputy uh, Boyd Barrett. A number of members have already uh, contributed the seven-minute contribution. Any members to wish to? Deputy Boyd Barrett, if they haven't, you have two minutes. Yeah, well, uh, the uh, amendment which we discussed uh, in a fair bit of detail the last time is to extend the ban on uh, hydraulic fracking that the bill proposes and which we support to the offshore. And uh, indeed, there's been quite a bit of debate and lobbying and so on about this over the last week and maybe concerns that raising this issue would in some way frustrate the passing of the bill. And I want to restate that we want this bill to pass. We think it is a historic development that uh, a ban would be uh, imposed, and we commend uh, Deputy McLaughlin uh, for getting it to this point. And I don't think there is or should be any doubt that this bill will pass uh, today, this morning. However, we see no reason why the <clears throat> arguments that apply to onshore fracking wouldn't apply to offshore. The uh, toxic uh, polluting nature of the chemicals involved in fracking, which we have now accepted, potentially pollute our water, uh, impact on human health, uh, would be damaging to uh, the onshore environment. All of those things apply. All of those things apply to the offshore. And we have experience of this in California, in the Gulf, and so on, where marine life is being destroyed, where toxic chemicals that cause cancer, cancer in billions of litres of this stuff is being poured into uh, the uh, waters off the United States, uh, causing un uh, you know, unquantifiable damage to marine ecosystems, potentially to human health. Uh, uh, seismic, the seismic dangers uh, involved with uh, fracking, all of those things apply. Uh, the other point I'd make, Count Corla, which was made to me in the last while, although it's too late, I would have put an amendment in on this, uh, is that we should, as part of this, need to be making a case to, uh, through the north-south ministerial bodies to our counterparts in the north, uh, uh, which was in fact included in my original bill on this matter, that it would be policy to demand, uh, to call for and campaign for a ban on fracking uh, north of the border, because if there's fracking in Fermanagh, it's going to impact on us. So I, uh, I'm going to press the amendment, Count Corla, the, the, the ban should extend to the offshore. Uh, I think the government, I fear the government and Fianna Fáil probably want to leave the door open to offshore fracking, uh, and that's why I, I think it's important to press it because the arguments apply on and offshore. 
I'm in a generous mood, and I'll allow you to wrap up later uh, because well, Deputy that's Wallace. The rules, sorry, that's the rules that I'm allowed to wrap up. No, it's not. If, it is. If yeah. I were implementing, this is your third intervention. No, second, Deputy second, Wallace. second. No, 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 no. no. Memory's not gone yet, uh, Deputy Wallace. This, this, this is my second. Your second. The debate that happened here last week was a little disappointing. We saw our amendments criticised by Government, the Greens, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, all, all under pressure to get the bill rammed through the House in one hour and 20 minutes. As I said last week, I don't believe that the Government has any uh, re genuine interest in tackling climate change, and the record of terrible planning and the prevalence of one-off housing has more to do with this bill being passed than any genuine concern at the advance of climate change. Nimbyism hasn't gone away. Last week, the Minister said it's inappropriate to introduce statutory prohibitions that are not underpinned by scientific rationale and place Ireland at an unfair competitive disadvantage by creating the uncertainty of limiting the operator's capability to access uh, reservoirs in the Irish offshore. This was the Government's main argument put forward against our amendments. So let's examine the statement for a second. The fracking bill put forward by the Government introduces a statutory prohibition of onshore fracking. According to the Minister's logic then, banning fracking must be underpinned by scientific rationale. In terms of the scientific rationale of banning fracking offshore, which our amendment aims to do, the Minister and others in the Chamber seem to be under the illusion that fracking is not carried out offshore. This was discussed at a committee, and when Deputy Ryan asked if fracking offshore existed, Minister, uh, you said that the only use of fracking in the petroleum sector is where they hit a stubborn section of the core and they frack it to shatter the rock to be able to ease the continuation of the drilling, but there's actually more to it than that. Uh, leaving aside the, the fact in order to battle climate change disaster, banning any practice relating to the extraction of fossil fuels should be a priority. This statement by the Minister is not fully true. In 2015, documents obtained by Al Jazeera America reveal that the world's largest oil firms are now fracking in some of the Gulf's deepest waters. The fracking that Minister Kine is talking about is dubbed frack packing and has been used offshore for decades and implies high pressurised water, gravel and chemicals to clear sand from the opening of the well and facilitate the flow of fossil fuels. But federal officials have now acknowledged in written statements to Al Jazeera that a more expansive type of fracking involving higher fluids volumes and extending long distances from the well bore are being used in the Gulf of Mexico. Environmental observers in California obtained a list of chemicals used at 12 offshore fracking sites off its coast. Almost all the substances cause damage to organs in the human body and claim that fracking offshore can increase the risk of an oil spill as well as air and water pollution. So it mightn't affect the people in Leitrim, but it will affect the people on the Galway coast if we damage the waters uh, with something likewise out in the Irish Sea or in the Atlantic. Deputy Eamon Ryan. Thank you, Las Concorla. And I rise to support Deputy Boy Bart's amendment. And Deputy Wallace is right. Uh, there were complications in my mind last week as how we would work that, because there are complications with other uh, exploration areas in terms of oil and coal and other seams which was difficult. I said, how do you work it out? And that, to a certain extent, explains one of the reasons why we put down this amendment in a sense to say all offshore, ex offshore exploration is a way of actually overcoming those technical difficulties between what might be fracking and what might be petroleum exploration. As he says, often the two are combined. So I think, in say, the way we've addressed that is putting forward the amendment I've put here. But um, we need to stop extracting fossil fuels out of the ground. We need to do that for the local environmental reasons, in terms of polluting the water course, the all range of other effects, but we also need to protect our atmosphere. And that is on that basis, yes, we stop. We have to keep four-fifths of the known fossil fuels underground. We do not go offshore. We have plenty of our own resources onshore in renewable power that we can turn to. And on that basis, we support the amendment. It doesn't. And lastly, if I can, just to support the call for us to intervene with the North-South Ministerial Council. For all our talk about offshore, the bigger risk immediately is that a Northern Ireland administration will con continue fracking their ex licenses existing in the North, which we believe need to close, and we should apply political pressure on an all island basis to stop fracking in the North as well. At the same time, we ban it here. Now, before I call on the Minister and then Deputy um, Bybow to wrap up, any other members? You have been in, you have been in twice. <laughs> No, it's only the person who okay, it's only the deputy who proposes the amendment, even if it's a group that has the opportunity okay, to come well, I'm, I'm the first on number three, but I don't want to get back in on that, am I? No. No. 
Uh, we were dealing with them all together, and whoever uh, proposed the Deputy uh, Stanley, uh, who has not been in so far. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you're quite entitled to it, Deputy Stanley. Thanks, Kong thanks, Um Just on, on the issue of the amendments, uh, our amendment, Amendment 4, uh, we, we put in this uh, uh, over our concern uh, that's, that's been aired by other deputies here uh, the, the whole, around the whole area of offshore fracking and the potential dangers of that, because obviously um, fracking offshore could actually be more dangerous than fracking onshore. It's our intention. And I want to be clear about this as a party. We want to, we want to stop fracking right throughout the 32 counties of Ireland and offshore. However, uh, uh, we want to take an approach to this. Obviously, the immediate danger and the immediate problem is uh, uh, within this state onshore that there is a threat, particularly in the counties of Sligo and Leitrim. Uh, and on that basis, you know, not to hold up, not to delay this legislation. Uh, uh, I'm prepared to withdraw that amendment, um, um, you know, to allow this piece of legislation to go through. There are legal issues uh, and there are definitions and other matters that need to be teased out, um, uh, you know, that would take some piece of time. And we should move on to that work once we get this piece of legislation through and carry out further amendments to the Petroleum Act to do that. So I want to be clear about that, and we will certainly be moving on to that once this piece of legislation is passed. But the immediate task here is, is to try and secure a position where fracking uh, within the 26 counties of this state is banned and banned completely. But I want to be clear about it. We want to ensure that fracking uh, for shale gas is not allowed offshore, and we need to move on to that once we get this legislation through the House. But uh, I think that it would be a mistake this morning to hold up this uh, maybe for, for months or for years uh, so as we can tease out the issues around offshore fracking and the potential dangers of that, uh, Ceann Corley. So uh, on that basis, I am withdrawing Amendment No. 4 and we will be moving back to the issue of offshore once we get this legislation through. Number 4, then, you can do the necessary. Just one second, oh, Deputy Kenny. Thank you, Les Corley. Uh, if it's Just the, 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 issue, the issue of the additional amendment, and, and while, you know, particularly the first section, section one of the additional amendment, I have absolutely no problem with. However, the, the second section of it, which goes on to deal with um, the Minister shall not issue, renew, reinstate or extend any licences for exploration or extraction or production of, of, of offshore or onshore. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. That's that's the direction we need to be going in. That's that's the direction we need to be moving away from fossil fuel energy everywhere. That's that's the world target. That's what we need to be doing. However, I think we have to be sensible here. You know, and it's not to 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 say that the, the either the deputy that has proposed the amendment or the other deputy that has proposed amendments in regard to offshore are not sensible. But I do think we need to look at what we can achieve, and what we can achieve is we can achieve a bill which will deal with the issue at hand. And the issue at hand at the moment is that there is a danger of, frac of hydraulic fracturing happening on the, in the state onshore. Now, there isn't hydraulic fracturing happening offshore yet. However, there is the potential of it. And we need to deal with that. And what we have been advised is that if we go to, the issue, go to try and deal with the offshore issue, that it can be used. And we all know in certain sections of the, the civil service in this state, there are people who have a particular agenda. And they will use that notion of going offshore as a means of bringing it down a path where it will have to get further research and this, that and the other, and, and, and it will have to be referred to the, to, for legal expertise and everything else. Delay, 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 and the whole lot will fall. And that's the danger that I see in it. And I'm talking about people in, in the petroleum section of the department. So I, I think we need to recognise here that we have to try and achieve something, and the thing we can achieve is we can get this bill through, and once we get this bill through, we come back then and we sit down and we all work together to work on the offshore aspect of it. And I think if we can achieve that, it will be a very good day's work. But it is vital, it is absolutely vital that we get this bill through as swiftly as possible, and then we can all work together to work on the offshore aspect of it. But the offshore aspect it does need to be dealt with, and dealt with absolutely quickly. Thank you. Kenny, and I know it wouldn't be intentional, but you shouldn't refer to officials in that manner. 
So perhaps you'd like to clarify that. That wasn't intentional. Oh, it wasn't intentional. Okay. Now, we'll, uh, there may be a point of order. Yes, uh, just, uh, on, on the proposal by Deputy Stanley, uh, if trying to get in a separate uh, uh, legislation uh, to deal with offshore fracking, the chances of getting it this far are so slim because of the money order. It won't be allowed to get this far we again. We have an opportunity today to actually vote and to stop offshore fracking. We can do it today. You know, you're quite clever at circumventing because you're not allowed in this hard time. Even though I'm a generous, don't think. <laughs> If I decide not to bend, you might, if I decide not to bend, you mightn't get in again. Deputy uh, Murphy. It's a, a fairly lengthy contribution at the last debate uh, on this issue, so I, I'm going to say very little now. You, you'll be glad to know. I think, I think, you know, to be honest, in fairness to the people who have us here, the people from uh, Leitrim and North Common who started this campaign. It would be wrong now to look to put amendments to this, because the real reason we're all discussing this, and Deputy McLaughlin, in fairness to him, brought this forward and has done a lot of work on it, supported by Deputy Scanlon, myself, Deputy Kinney and others, but the real reason we're here is because those people brought it to our attention and have fought very hard to get this done. There will be another day and another opportunity for bills to be brought forward in relation to offshore fracking. And I welcome what Deputy Stanley and Deputy Kinney said, we should move ahead I would urge all members, as it is their right, to drop those amendments because we should really deal with the issue of banning fracking in the 26 counties, and that's just what I wanted to say today. Um, now, last chance. You'll be, yeah. Uh, Minister. Uh, good morning, uh, Lascan Corla. Again, I'd like to thank the deputies for their uh, contributions. Um, the original title to Deputy McLaughlin's bill was the Prohibition of the Exploration and Extraction of Onshore Petroleum Bill uh, 2016, and that was the subject of um, comprehensive debate and analysis at the uh, Joint Committee on Communications, Climate Action and Environment, where they held hearings, where they debated the issues, where they brought in experts and where they produced a report, the recommendations of which uh, were included in the amendments that the Government brought uh, to the Bill. And the new title of the Bill, uh, which was agreed at, at uh, committee stage, is the Petroleum and Other Minerals Development brackets Prohibition of Onshore Hydraulic Fracturing Bill 2016. So the entire debate has been on onshore. Now I fully respect the views of people here who suggest that we should look at banning offshore fracking or offshore oil exploration. And I'm not suggesting that there isn't a time or a place for that debate. But I think it should be done in the context uh, of a separate bill. I think it should be done in the context of a separate uh, committee analysis, uh, bringing in experts on all sides to give their views. And that would be the approach that I would suggest uh, in relation to this. And that's why we, we are advising that we won't support uh, the amendments uh, that are put down. I believe that with respect to Deputy McLaughlin, who brought in the bill, the bill related to onshore, and I think we should um, maintain the bill and the integrity of the bill as was uh, put down by Deputy McLaughlin, confine it to onshore. And let's, ha let's have another debate on another day, and I know Deputy Boyd Barrett has his own bill in relation to offshore, and others can bring in bills in relation to uh, offshore oil exploration, but have a bigger debate. Don't try and ban offshore oil exploration um, following a few back and forths here without the proper debate and analysis at committee stage. So, uh, on behalf of the Government, we're, we're, we're not agreeable to the amendment. Those who have only spoken once are entitled to come in a second oh, time if you haven't. Additional... No, but, but, you want to come for the fourth time? Uh, Deputy Scanlon, two minutes. And, and uh, I'm quite honestly, I'm a little bit confused because last Wednesday night we had uh, the debate here, and Deputy Ryan, you, you uh, I think, suggested to Deputy Boy Barrett that he withdraw his amendment and that the, the bill could pass last Wednesday night. Now, that was my understanding. And quite honestly, uh, if these amendments are taken, it's going to put this bill round the House for the next six months. And we don't want that. And as the minister referred to, it's, the bill is onshore, banning fracking onshore. That's what the bill states, and that's what we're here to do today. And I'm calling everybody to at least get this part of the problem solved. And our position is that we will be 
our, our position here today as Fianna Fáil is we're supporting the bill. And I think that I would ask the people that have amendments to withdraw them because it's only going to slow the process down for the next six months. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, two, two, two minutes. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope those in the gallery and anybody watching is, is, is looking closely at the political machinations that are going on here because they're, they're fascinating, I tell you. They're a real glimpse into how this place uh, works. Uh, and it is true, by the way, Deputy Ryan, you should put up your hands and admit it. Last week you argued we should withdraw our amendments, and now you're putting in an amendment that goes even further in the direction of ours. So that's, this is what goes on. Now, I want to, I want to but this is carry on, right? Uh, they, they, you see, I think Sinn Fein are making a mistake on this, right? There was a bill brought in by me in 2016. It said we would ban hydraulic fracturing. And it was specific about the process, all other practices to extract hydrocarbon from coal seams, shale rock and tight sands in Ireland. Then a bill comes from Deputy McLaughlin, and I commend him for doing it. He's representing his constituency, but that bill reflects the pressure of Fina Gael to have a more diluted ban on fracking that doesn't extend to the offshore. So we've had nearly, what, a year and a half to debate the offshore. There's a, we have plenty of opportunity to do it, but Fine Gael and I suspect Fianna Fáil made a political decision. We do not want a ban to extend to offshore because our friends in the uh, oil and gas industry would not like that. That's the reason, right? You've been, the government have been forced, because of popular opposition in Leitrim and elsewhere, into this ban, but they don't want the ban to go too far. And it's important to stress, Fracking Free Clare, for example, have been in touch with me saying we should press our amendments. In fact, they're very worried about the definition of fracking in this bill because they think it opens up uh, the possibility of other fracking type uh, processes uh, which will not be covered by this but would have been covered by my bill. Right? So that's the political game that's going on. And so we make no apologies in saying the ban for all the reasons, climate change, uh, the polluting uh, capacity, the poisonous, toxic nature of these chemicals, the potential for seismic damage, all of these things apply offshore as well as onshore, and we need to close the door on these things, and we need to do it urgently. Thank you. That concludes, that concludes uh, the debate on the... Deputies, that concludes the debate on 1 to 5. So, Deputy Whitebart, where stands Amendment 1? It's being pressed. It should have done a wower, Abadis Ta. Ta. It should have done a gunya, Abadis Neil. Shilam, Goal, and Cash, Culture.
Item number 20, Petroleum and Other Minerals Development Prohibition on of onshore hydraulic fracturing bill 2016 amendment one in the name of deputy richard white barrett the question is that the amendment be made and in that question a division has been challenged deputies ta richard white barrett and uh mike barry neil deputies tony mclaughlin and kevin Morn. Jentaru na ta karjeg Neil Shakwakuig tan kesh kacha. We move on now to Amendment Two. Uh, where stands the amendment? Impressed. Uh, amendment Number Two. It should have tan a wawar abidis ta. It should have tan a gani abidis Neil. Shilong kon kesh kacha. Tan kesh kacha. Ever a three. Uh, in the names of Wallace, uh, Smith, Boyd Barrett and Kenny. Where stands Amendment 3? Uh, amendment 3 being pressed by Deputy Wallace. It should have taken a wawar up at this time. It should have taken a gun up at this kneel. She don't go and catch culture. For top. For
This is Amendment 2, isn't it? Amendment 3. Stage Amendment 3. It's Amendment 3, is it? Uh, amendment number three in the name of uh, Deputy Mick Wallace. The question is that the amendment been made, and in that question, a division has been challenged. Deputies Ta, uh, Deputies Wallace, and Richard Boyd Barrett Neil, Deputies Tony McLaughlin, and Kevin Moore. Chitaru na ta kug jeg neil shakushak tan kesht kalcha. Now, amendment number four, uh, Deputy Stanley, where stands amendment four? Amendment four withdrawn. Amendment 4A in the name of Deputy Ryan, where stands amendment? That's concurrent. It should have tan a wawar ta. It should have tan a gunya abadish neil. Shilam Golden Cash Culture. Vote up.
Ryan. The question is that the amendment be made, and on that uh, question, a division has been challenged. Will the deputies dissenting or claiming a division please rise in their places? Well, Tinis Mona Jai. Uh, so the division will proceed. Tellers Ta, Deputies Eamon Ryan and Catherine Martin, Yale, Deputies Tony McLaughlin and Joe Carey. Amendment number five, and the names of Deputies Breed Smith, Boyd Barrett, and Deputy uh, Gino Kenny. Where stands Amendment five? It should have a wow, Rabbi Dish. To. Can't hear you. Your white. Your your white me who? Deputies. Your way he may how? He should turn a gun, yeah. Neil. Short vote. Short vote. Timmy, Timmy.
Amendment 5 in the name of Deputy Richard White Barrett. Uh, the question is that the amendment be made, and in that question, the division has been challenged. Deputies Ta, Richard White Barrett, and Mick Wallace. Neil. Deputies Ta, Richard White Barrett, and Mick Wallace. Neil. Deputies Tony McLaughlin and Joe Carey. Ta Kuicheg, Neil Shakwa, Ock, Ta and Kesh, Culture. Now that we have disposed of the amendments, uh, we now proceed to the order for fifth stage. And I ask Deputy McLaughlin when it is proposed to take the fifth stage. <coughs> Deputy McLaughlin to move. I move. It has concurred. Thank you very much indeed. Pleased to all that. Uh, at the fifth stage is what's in the bill. No extraneous matter is not what you'd like to have in the bill. Deputy McLaughlin. Thank you very much, Lance Kinkura. I wish to, uh, to begin the concluding remarks of my uh, private member's bill uh, this morning by stating for the record of the Dáil and just how proud I am to be able to stand here today at the final stage of the legislative process in the Dáil with my bill. Ramazan. Sean, are you coming in after that, yeah?
very much, um, uh, Les Kincurla. And I wish to begin by uh, the concluding remarks of my uh, private member's bill this morning by stating for the record of Dolly Earden just how proud I am to be able to stand here today at the final stage of the legislative process in the Dáil with my bill. As a humble backbench TD from the Sligo Leitrim constituency, I believe that my bill's passage through the Dáil today will be a major moment for our politics. I say this because, as you will be acutely aware, Les Kincurla, private members' bills rarely, if ever, make it past the second reading of this legislative process in Dáil or Shannon Aaron. So to be here this morning at the final stage of the process with a private member's bill that will ensure that the environment and communities in the west and northwest of Ireland will be protected from the harmful and damaging effects of hydraulic fracking is a special moment for me and for the people I was elected to represent. That's concurrently, in my opinion, at least the sheer speed and progress of this bill this year shows that away from all the negativity in the media that surrounds the concept of new politics, that new politics can work and in fact work quite well. If all sides of the House engage proactively together. Since I introduced this bill to this House on the 8th of June 2016, at the first stage it has progressed at a rapid pace through to the report and final stage here today, where the goal now is to identify and debate as to whether this bill constitutes good law. Well, I can safely say that for me, as, a, as its sponsor, it could not be more clearer than this is in fact a very necessary law. And it's a bill that has been heavily scrutinised and continually improved by the Oireachtas over the last 12 months. I say this as the vast amount of research against fracking and which supports the need for this bill is quite clear and unequivocal. This includes over 500 academic studies on geographic areas in the US and Europe. It includes the Sustainable Water Network Ireland Research Report, which found that there is a substantial risk to our rivers and lakes in Ireland from fracking. And it includes the finding of the Irish EPA's report into hydraulic fracking in Ireland. The concerned health professionals of Ireland have also further supported the need for my bill as they have stated that the scientific evidence overwhelmingly shows that permitting fracking in Ireland and Northern Ireland would pose significant threats to the air, water and the health and safety of individuals and communities here. Last and curely at this stage, I want to take the opportunity here to thank all of the members of the Oireachtas Joint Committee who compiled the pre-legislative scrutiny report that was launched last April. That report, which firmly supported the need and scope of my bill, was yet another indication that Dáil Airden as a whole is committed to acting to prohibit the process of fracking from ever being allowed to occur in this country. Ultimately, Lask and Kjorla, what we have here at present is an extraction and exploration process that is scientifically proven to be bad for our environment, would damage our fresh groundwater, would affect our agricultural output, would damage our tourism industry and most importantly it would have a detrimental effect on our nation's public health. If it was ever permitted to occur in the Republic of Ireland, counties such as Sligo, Leitrim, Roscommon, Donegal, Cavan, Monaghan and Clare would end up seeing damaging effects like many affected cities and towns in the United States. Many of which, I must add, have now decided to implement similar bans such as the one before us today. On this basis, unconventional hydraulic fracking ultimately must be seen as a serious public health and environmental concern for tens of thousands of people in the Republic of Ireland. That's Kinkura. Due to this fact, this is the key reason why I felt that this bill is needed and this is also why I believe that the majority of the parties in this House also recognise the importance of it being passed here today. Before we decide if this bill will pass this House, I must note that it has been drafted, amended and improved over the last 11 months only due to the kind help and assistance of the Government and a number of local and national NGOs and organisations. At this stage in particular I want to thank Minister Sean Coyne, Minister Dennis Nocton, former Minister in that department, uh, Minister Joe McHugh, Kate Ruddock of the Friends of Ireland, of the Earth, 
Mr Eddie Mitchell and the entire Active Committee of Love Leitrim who are here with us this morning. Well done. Aideen Midlockton, Liam Breslin and all the members of the Good Energies Alliance, my political staff, Blaine in my office, my PA in the office and all of the other people who have supported me with this bill thus far. Last Kinkyorda, it has always been my intention since introducing this bill to have clear and appropriate legislation enacted to protect both the local quality of life in rural Ireland and Ireland's reputation abroad in industries such as agriculture. I am satisfied to support the bill as amended by the Select Committee. I believe that this bill, as it now stands, is in fully line with the intent of my proposal. A number of amendments were proposed at the committee stage of this bill to extend the ban on fracking into the Irish offshore. However, it is my understanding that this offshore activity does not raise the concerns that relate to onshore fracking. I believe that legislation should be considered unproportionate as members of the Dáil will have not had the benefit of pre-legislative scrutiny to debate about the offshore activities. Therefore, I do not believe that this extension of the prohibition of this activity in the offshore as part of this bill is appropriate, particularly when there does not appear to be scientific findings to support such an approach as of yet. So to conclude, last Cura, whilst many often ridiculed me and my party and questioned my efforts and intentions in this regard, I simply kept my head down and ultimately had have delivered this bill with the assistance of my colleagues on behalf of the affected people and communities I was fortunate enough to be elected to represent. There can be no substitute for hard work and it is only through hard work that this bill has got this far. I now eagerly await its passage through the Senate and the final signature of uh, um, President. Gormagoth. Deputy Eamon Ryan. Thank you very much indeed, Luskin Cora. I want to commend Deputy M M McLaughlin for getting this bill through the Dáil. I want to commend Ministers Nocton and Coyne and their officials for assisting in its passage. Um, one of the biggest environmental defects in our country or the problems we've had in, over recent decades is the loss of pristine water quality. We need to reconnect with our land and reconnect our connection with nature and we need to start by getting back our water to pristine condition. We have a huge opportunity and advantage in this country in the availability of water, but we need to look after it and that's what we're doing here in this bill uh, and that's hugely significant at a local level but for the whole country. It's also significant internationally. There's an international environmental campaign against fracking and against the use of fossil fuels. Today is a victory for them. At a time when President Trump, the US President, is considering the, turning his country into a rogue state, an illegal state in my mind in, in terms of uh, crimes against future, the, the future of humanity on this planet, it's important that we as a country stand up for action on climate change and that is what we are doing here today. More than anything else, though, I think it's a victory for community groups in Leitrim, and I think they now have, or, or we have the responsibility of working with them to show that there is another way of developing counties in Ireland, maybe counties that aren't at the centre of the economic development, the, uh, as is happening here in Dublin. We need to develop an alternative economy. We need to lift rural Ireland. We need to bring people back rather than uh, them ever turning, uh, turning up or turning to move to, to uh, Dublin. And I think that's what we start here today, is actually the rejuvenation, the re in, in, in invigoring of counties like Limerick and Roscommon, um, not by using fossil fuels, but instead using our wit and our resources, other resources we have in real uh, bounty. And you start by looking after your water, you start by looking after your air, and that's what we're voting and passed through here today. Thank you, Las Thank you. Uh, Next is Deputy by Barrett. Uh, thanks, Las Cancorla. Um, uh, once again, can I commend uh, Deputy McLaughlin for uh, getting the bill to this point, and I have no doubt it will pass, hopefully unopposed, uh, through the final stage. Uh, so it is very much to his credit that uh, we've got to this point. Um, but I think he would accept, and I think it's been echoed by others, that the biggest victory here is the victory of people power. Uh, in Leitrim and indeed uh, across the country uh, of uh, communities, environmental campaigners who have taken up this fight uh, and made it impossible for 
the political uh, parties and this House to ignore uh, the arguments they have made, uh, the justice uh, of their cause in insisting that uh, onshore fracking is uh, banned because it w will pollute the water, it uh, will endanger human health, uh, it will uh, contribute to uh, further uh, climate change uh, and on that and all sorts of other grounds, the impact on tourism, on our pristine landscape, there is simply no justification for it. Uh, and it is people power that has for forced uh, the political system to acknowledge that fact. Um, and I think it is worth commenting, uh, Las Corla, how far we have come in that regard. Uh, I remember when we were at uh, the Environmental Committee when the EPA were doing a report, which frankly, I think many of us felt was an absolute stitch up in that the two major consultants looking into the viability of fracking were both deeply linked uh, with the uh, oil and gas industry and the pro-fracking lobby. Uh, and incredibly, were not even looking into the health implications of uh, fracking. So that's where we were at. And it is because of people power and pressure and persistence and determination uh, by the environmental movement and by uh, the campaign communities campaigning on this issue uh, that we have got to this, uh, to this uh, point. And it is a great victory, there's no doubt about it. It's historic, it sets a precedent, uh, and we should be uh, delighted that that is the case. I have to, in conclusion, last Count Corla, disagree with Deputy McLaughlin's points about the offshore However, uh, I think there is no question that all of the arguments that apply to the dangers of onshore fracking apply equally to the offshore. Uh, and in fact, uh, that evidence is piling in now from the experience of offshore fracking in the United States. There was a report in 2014, Troubled Waters, uh, which says that at least 10 fracking chemicals routinely used in offshore fracking in California kill or harm a broad variety of marine species, including sea otters and uh, fish. Uh, in California, elephant seals, leatherback sea turtles, uh, and so on are being affected because of the chemicals used in uh, their key habitats. Uh, also, the chemicals being used are shown to uh, 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 cause cancer and impact uh, negatively on human health. So all of these things apply just as much to the offshore, and quite frankly, I am deeply worried because I think some of the biggest uh, uh, reserves are likely to be found in the offshore and I think the door is still open to that and that door needs to be closed uh, and also of course for the pressing and urgent need uh, to deal with runaway uh, climate change and the threat that that poses to the whole of humanity uh, and to the entirety of the globe. So I disagree with Deputy McLaughlin on that point and I think we should have gone further. That being said, uh, it is uh, a victory for people power and I don't know what I would say about the new politics that Deputy McLaughlin referred to but it does show, it does show that uh, the, the, uh, the reduction in the dominance of two or three major parties in this country has actually opened the door for uh, change and it does show that parties from across uh, the political spectrum can cooperate on the things that they do agree on and get results when critically working in conjunction with people outside this house uh, and allowing that voice of civil society to really uh, impinge on our work and that's, that's to me the new politics uh, is listening to the voices outside and actually being messengers to the doll uh, in terms of uh, the demands and the campaigns and the issues uh, and the wisdom, indeed, of the people outside uh, the Parliament uh, 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 impacting on the work we do and the laws we pass. And in that sense, that is a great victory, but there's a lot more to be done, uh, and I think we need to press on now to the ban on the offshore uh, and to the other issues uh, relating to climate change and environmental destruction. Lord Michael, I just want to remind, well, uh, it's my understanding uh, that the members are anxious to ensure that this bill is completed today and it's sent to the Shannon, but... 
We have uh, Deputy Dooley, Deputy Wallace, Deputy Stanley, Deputy Martin Kenny, Deputy Murphy, and Minister Kane. And to remind you that we must adjourn at 12. So just bear that in mind when you're making your contributions. Otherwise, if we go on up to 12, we will be adjourning until a later date. Uh, Deputy uh, Timmy Dooley. Thanks very much, Nascan uh, um, I very much welcome the opportunity to have participated uh, in the uh, passage uh, of this bill and working with Deputy McLaughlin and others uh, on the committee. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a testament to the approach of new politics. When Deputy McLaughlin's bill was published, Fianna Fáil were also uh, working on a bill, and we chose to stop and follow the lead that the Deputy has said. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand Sinn Féin, uh, as a political party, were also working on this issue. Uh, and, and again, they will talk for themselves, but I assume they chose to hold back and, and, and work in a collective way. That to me is probably the most progressive in terms of the rules and procedures that are here, decision that was taken, where you had an issue that was of importance and interest to everybody. And we have got to be careful here, and whilst I have absolutely great regard for Deputy Boyd Barrett, sometimes I get the impression that if the main political parties venture into an area that he's particularly interested in, uh, we're somehow excoriated because we haven't had the same connection as he sees it to civil society. Now, maybe I'm mischaracterising his views here, but to suggest somehow that the major political parties have not been connected with civil society or with citizens over the years, I think would be, would be an unfair characterisation, because that's how we managed to get people elected because we listen to the people and we try to represent them. Now, I recognise that in, in the more fractured environment which society generally is, to pardon the pun, um, that of course we have to work collaboratively and collectively. And that's the approach that our uh, front bench took in relation to the progression of our own bill. We said, well, if there's, if, there's a, if, if there's a bill there that we can work with and if the effect at the end of the day is the same thing, it doesn't matter that it's Deputy McLaughlin's bill that got, got moved uh, first. It, it's not about that. And great credit due to him for the work that he has done on it and for spearheading it, spearheading it and driving it. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't be about the badge that's on the back of it. We're all collectively here to serve the people who put us here. And it has been clear, I think, to the vast majority of people in this House that certainly onshore hydraulic fracturing has the capacity in a small island to have absolutely detrimental impact on not just the landscape, on the tourism potential for a region, on the ability for people who live in the area to enjoy the amenities that are there. And of course there's the issue around groundwater and, and all of that. And like I go back to my own county, Clare, which was identified as having an area uh, that potentially could have some reserves of shale gas or oil. And a decision was taken by the members of Clare County Council way back, way back, um, when it wasn't even maybe as fashionable to be talking about fracking or people have as much interest. And it was a, a, a council that was predominantly uh, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. I don't know who had majority at the time. But they were very quick to cotton on to it. And I think it was probably the first council, and I know Leitrim and others did afterwards, it was one of the first councils to, to, to um, to effectively pass a motion to say that they wanted a ban and that they didn't want to proceed with any activities that might lead to any level of uh, exploration uh, or in further investigation. And they, they were at the forefront and councillors did that. So this, this has worked really well. And I know there are councillors from Leitrim here because that's where this particular focus ha has come from, Sligo and Leitrim. But the, 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 the councillors in Clare were, 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 were talking about this a long time ago because they understood the impact in particularly the, the, the fact that Irish people live in, in dispersed rural communities. And that, that has its own issues around groundwater and sewerage and, and all of that, and we talk about that in, in different ways. But it was very clear that this kind of practice, whilst it may have been, I won't say permissible or acceptable, but it was happening in other countries where there were vast, vast tracts of land where no human... Uh, existed or, or, or lived. It was not a fit for this country. And I had my concerns back during the, the, the darker days of the recession that somebody in an office 
high above the city of Dublin would think, why should we be banning fracking when there's reserves in the ground that could potentially assist us in our time of need? And I was deeply concerned that that, that type of thinking might have emerged. It, thankfully, it didn't. Thankfully, we were in a position to be able to support this ban today and ensure that regardless of what opportunities or what potential might emerge at a later stage, that nobody is um, minded to see it as some, 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 some benefit. And of course, on the wider environmental issue, we have to get real about moving away from carbon and from the extraction of carbon uh, as an energy source. We have some vast uh, potential with offshore wind. And I would appeal to the Department and to the Minister to look at the support that's needed, uh, particularly in the refit programme that's being, that's being proposed, to look at supporting uh, offshore wind, similarly as you, as you will in terms of the level of support that you give um, to, to, to solar and other exploratory areas. There is, uh, and there was in the last refit programme, uh, uh, to the best of my recollection, support for tidal uh, and wave energy. Um, that really hasn't developed. It hasn't gotten to the space that it needs to get to. But there is potential to support the R&D around research and development opportunities around offshore wind energy. And I think that needs to be addressed by the Department. So in, it, very much in supporting this, it's not, it's not the end of our, of our interest across the, the, the political parties here in terms of the protection of the environment. We have to get real about looking at other alternative sources and the state has to move well beyond just banning. It has to get really proactive about supporting alternative energy sources so that we can ultimately move to a point where we're not dependent on gas and oil, where we have to move towards electric cars and electric vehicles and, and try to get beyond that. It's interesting when you look at what Norway are doing a country that has built up such a reserves uh, of, 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 of a sovereign wealth fund funded by the extraction uh, of oil and gas are now looking at an ending of uh, non-electric vehicles by, uh, or vehicles depending on, 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 on carbon uh, by 2025. So it's very clear that even oil producing countries see an end in sight. Um, we need to do the same thing. We need to get far more aggressive about supporting electric vehicles and using electricity um, as a means to, to power our country. And in doing so, we've got to find the cheaper ways to produce it, and it can't be from oil or gas. We've got to look to wind uh, into the Atlantic, uh, or from the, the, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, thanks very much, and, and again to compliment uh, Deputy McLaughlin for his efforts, and, and to his staff as well, who I know uh, have put a hell of a lot of work into this. Oftentimes, they're the unsung heroes in this, and so I think it's right to recognise uh, all, all concerned. There are still a number of deputies indicating that they want to contribute, but I would remind deputies the fifth stage is about what was in the bill. We're confined to what's in the bill, <coughs> and we shouldn't go, go outside that. And to remind you, I'm in your hands. There's less than 25 minutes left. Um, Deputy. I, I promise not to talk for as long as uh, Timmy. Um, just, uh, just my, just my, my, my understanding of new politics is that anything that uh, Fianna Fáil are prepared to vote for will be passed in here, which is great. So I'm delighted to hear that Timmy says that Fianna Fáil are going to get real about climate change, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, coming about. Um, I commend uh, Tony Bidlockton as well, and uh, it's, it's great that this is actually uh, coming into legislation, and I commend all the people that fought for us right around the country. And uh, it's good. And uh, obviously, uh, we've, we've already debated the reasons why it came about. But just to address, uh, the one point I really want to address is uh, the deniers uh, around uh, offshore and the effects that uh, fracking uh, can possibly have. Uh, I, I just referred to, uh, in late 16, uh, upon the release of US federal records, it was discovered that between 2010 and 2014, the Obama administration approved more than 1,500 permit applications for offshore drilling plants that included fracking at hundreds of wells across the Gulf of Mexico. An unknown number of permit applications have yet to be released, so the scope of offshore fracking in the Gulf is likely even larger. The industry was allowed to dump 
a staggering 76 billion gallons of waste fluid into the sea in 2014 alone. So let's get real. Fracking offshore is going to be hugely problematic. We didn't just throw in the amendment. It's in the, it is in the, our amendment was in the interest of health and safety of the people who live in coastal communities, the wildlife in our oceans, and the urgent need to do something to tackle the advance of climate change. Fracking offshore is a new practice, and according to the reporting on it, is developing as a viable extraction method, the waste from which is routinely dumped straight into the waters. It is unconscionable that the Government approved any exploration licence in Irish water in the past year. I hope to God, for the sake of the lives of the people all over the planet and on the coasts of Ireland, uh, that they do not actually find anything out there. And this is my last point. Uh, uh, whatever happens to the bill from here, uh, a ban on fracking may be challenged under the terms of the CETA agreement, the vast majority uh, of which will most likely be provisionally applied on July 1st. We have been assured by Minister Mitchell O'Connor that there will be a vote on CETA here in the Dáil before it is fully ratified. Either way, even with provisional application, fracking comes under the terms of the agreement. Minister Mitchell O'Connor has stated that substantive engagement took place sector by sector to identify Ireland's interest over the course of the CETA negotiations. This is simply not the case. CETA has a negative list system whereby a country must explicitly name legislation and areas of regulation uh, or else it is included under the trade deal. The list negative list has been used extensively by other EU countries. Germany, for example, submitting a list of the names of individual pieces of legislation 25 pages long. Ireland only submitted eight areas of Irish governance to be excluded. Flour milling, mining, the legal profession, veterinary services, maritime transport, executive employment services, privately funded social services and intercity busing services. This is basically a list of the professions and groups who taught to lobby the Department of Jobs and Enterprise. There has been zero effort to safeguard the environment or the health of the public. Having our fracking ban attacked through the investor court system by multinational oil and gas, exploration, gas corporations is 100 per cent on the cards if CETA is ratified, along with everything else not on that pathetic list of eight exclusions. And even if CETA is not ratified, on the provisional application, our refusal to grant a fracking licence can qualify as a technical barrier to trade and end up being taken to the Regulatory Cooperation Council. And pressure can be put on us to change our regulation in this area. It really is difficult to figure out whether you couldn't give a damn about the environment uh, or whether you're in the pockets of big business. But uh, what I would say is that, especially to the people who care about uh, fracking in Ireland and the environment, you should also now lobby your TDs to make sure that we do not ratify CETA in here. Thank you. I want to welcome uh, the uh, passage of this true report stage. Um, I think that uh, this, this bill is a, is a statement uh, for sustainable development and for common sense. And I want to uh, commend the campaign groups, Deputy McLaughlin, um, our own councillors and the Sinn Féin councillors in Sligo and Leitrim made sure for the last six years that this was kept up there, top of the agenda. And um, Michael Carivi, former deputy, as well, uh, supported you with this. Um, and Martin Kenny, following on from that. So I just want to recognise that and to work with people at local level, because sometimes when you're campaigning on issues like this, uh, it can often seem that you're um, fighting a lost cause. But you know, people stuck together and kept at it and kept doing the research and coming up with the facts and figures. Uh, and also pointing out the disastrous consequences of fracking in the United States and the, the waste ground that's left behind, and the environmental damage and the damage to water, etc. Um, uh, we had a similar bill, with a bill ready to go. In fact, we were a few days away from pressing the button and introducing it. And you know, you introduced the bill, uh, Deputy McLaughlin, and on that basis, the common sense thing to do was to withdraw it uh, and to, uh, you know, to, uh, to get behind to get behind Deputy McLaughlin's bill. This is a victory for long-termism. And sustainable development, and it's a it's a, a statement, and it's passing legislation that stops short-termism. And the one thing that has crucified this country 
you know, we've made an awful lot of short, uh, decisions that were about short-termism, and we didn't think of the long-term consequences. And you know, we have a good farming industry in this country. We have a very good farming industry in Sligo and Leitrim, despite the fact that a lot of the land in it is marginal. I've been up in Leitrim many times, and a lot of the land in, in uh, parts of Sligo and Leitrim is very marginal land. But you know, we have a good, thriving farming industry there. We have an excellent tourism industry in it that needs to be developed further. Just a word on the previous EPA report. I remember that coming before the committee, and you know, and I would say this to deputies right across the House, the government ministers and officials, we need to be careful of what consultants put together and put in front of us here and in council chambers. In my time as an elected representative, I have seen, I've seen all types of dodgy reports being drawn up by consultants and being put up before the EPA and being brought, brought before councillors and being brought before this House here. And we just need to be careful of it uh, and need to be more careful of who has drawn them up. Um, just to conclude, uh, on the issue of offshore and onshore, let me be clear in stating our opposition to offshore fracking. But the task here today is to make sure that onshore, within the 26 counties of this state, that we, that we ban it. And we must do that. And in the interest of getting it, getting it through quickly, that's the reason that we, we withdrew our amendment. We didn't press the amendment. Just in terms of you know, the bill, people say you know, it's the bill against fracking. This is a bill for common sense. It's a bill for sustainability, and it's a victory for common sense. So I want to just commend everybody involved in it, and uh, certainly in the Shannon, we will be doing everything we can to make sure it moves through quickly and to get it enacted and to get it signed off on by Uchtra and Aaron. Or Margaret. Well, to get it moving on, then I would ask members, and I'm not trying to restrict anybody. 12 o'clock is Absolutely less here, and I just want to again commend Deputy McLaughlin for the bill and all the community organisations across North Leitrim, particularly is where the core of this came from, but indeed in the county surrounding it, and I see people from the other side of the border from Anna here as well. This is an issue that affects communities all over the country, and I think it is a good day for democracy that this bill goes through the way it has gone through. Now, the, the issue that many people brought up, which is about the bigger stuff, about climate change, about uh, energy resources in the future and how that's going to be dealt with. That's very, very big politics. And turning that around with all the vested interests that's involved is going to be a big job, but it's a job that we have to take on. And the longest of journeys begin in the first step. And we have taken not just a step, but I think many good strides forward today by getting this bill through. But there is a long journey to go. There is a lot of things to be dealt with. We do need to deal with the issue of offshore fracking. We do need to the issue of the use of, 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 uh, of carbons in general and where we're going to go in regard to all of that. But today is a day where there has been a huge victory, as many have said, for the communities out there that have worked so hard to make this happen. I want to commend Deputy McLaughlin and his team and the people who worked with them, and everyone in this House, because this bill would not be gone through, but for all of us supported it, and the people who came with the amendments to it, fair play to them, they put forward their point of view. There's nobody saying anyone is wrong here. It's not about being right and wrong, it's about what works. And today, we have come up with a bill that works, that will go through, and that will succeed. And that success is the start, I hope, of many more successes in turning around the way climate change has gone on in this country. And I want to commend the bill and thank Dr. Premier Lachlan again. Deputy Murphy. Forward today, after all the hard work. Just again, uh, I have to uh, say a big appreciation to Deputy McLaughlin for his work, and indeed, as has been mentioned, his staff. And I think new politics did work because, as Deputy Dooley said, both Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin, who were preparing bills, uh, decided not to go with them and totally support what you were doing. And that's, yes, new politics working at its best. Look, we have a fantastic product in Ireland. It's called tourism. And in our own areas of Roscommon, Leitrim, Midlands West, we have a fantastic product in terms of our agritourism, our heritage, our waterways, our lakes. That's where we need to develop and develop and put more money into them. And I just want to say to my colleagues in Roscommon County Council, who were the first in Ireland to vote to ban fracking in 2011-2012 and took that brave decision and subsequently followed it up in the County Development Plan to stick to that. That was important. But finally, to the people from Leitrim and North Roscommon, who fought a fantastic campaign right through. And it was a, a privilege to go to their meetings, their public uh, meetings in Carrick or wherever they were held. Uh, you educated a lot of us. It's a great, great day, I think. And it's a fantastic day that what you set out to achieve has been achieved. Oh, Michael. Michael. Smith. 
Uh, just to commend Deputy um, McLaughlin here today, this is a wonderful day for democracy. It is an issue that has affected uh, people in West Cavan as well, a very beautiful and historic uh, part of the, the country, um, particularly where we have the UNESCO Geopark there as well, the Burren Forest, the Kilka Mountains, uh, and a spokesperson on heritage and, and having attended many meetings in Cavan County mm -hmm. Council where presentations were made on this particular issue. It is wonderful to see it happening. It is a victory for democracy. It is a victory for uh, new politics as well, any of the negativity that is out there about that. I think there's been huge consensus around the House on this particular issue. Uh, and I would just like to commend you and your staff on seeing this through to this point today. I wish you luck with the final stage of it. Deputy Eamon Scanlon, and then the Minister. And Corna, look, and I'm very conscious of the time, and we don't want to over time. We want to get this sorted today. I just want to thank everybody for their, their support, particularly uh, Deputy McLaughlin and staff for getting this bill, bill uh, to, to where it is today, and to the people who, as, as was already stated, uh, educated us all really on, on the dangers and the damage that fracking can do. And I'm not going to say any more because I'm conscious, very conscious of the time. Thank you, Leslie. Right, and Deputy um, or Minister Kane. Chairman. I will ensure it will be finished before the, the uh, allocated hour. I would like to, in the first instance, to congratulate uh, Deputy McLaughlin uh, on the progression of this bill, which I understand is the first private member's bill to progress through uh, to report and final stage, certainly in this dull term, and I think also for a considerable number of years. I would like to uh, acknowledge the support of the political parties and independents uh, across the House uh, on that uh, issue. I would also like to acknowledge the support of former ministers um, in my department, my uh, predecessor, uh, Joe McHugh, uh, Pat Rabbit and Fergus O'Dowd, who were involved in the moratorium uh, on fracking over the last number uh, of years uh, as well, and also the officials within my department, particularly Orla Ryan, for their work in support of the bill. Also, the committee uh, which chaired the debate, the chair of the committee, Deputy Hildegard uh, Nocton, and members of the committee who, who engaged with the um, synthesis report that was published, the EPA led synthesis report, and um, published the report which gave recommendations uh, which also supported uh, the. Um, the basis of Deputy McLaughlin's bill. A number of deputies raised issues in relation to. Uh, uh, Emitted this the last um, contribution, the north south element of this, and certainly if I'm left in position, I will uh, raise this at the north south ministerial uh, council meetings uh, when the executive is up and running again in the north. I think Deputy Boyd Barrett and Deputy Ryan uh, raised that in relation to the north south uh, element. Um, just, uh, I suppose, a, a few points, and again, and I'll keep an eye on the clock, that the there appears to be some concerns that the progression of technology in the future might in some way allow a circumvention of the spirit and letter of this bill. I would like to make it clear that hydraulic fracturing will always require the pumping of high volumes of fluid into rock and that this act activity is clearly prohibited uh, by the bill. I would also like to emphasise that hydraulic fracking cannot be undertaken without the grant of a petroleum licence and as this bill makes it unlawful for any person to search for, get, raise, take, carry away or work petroleum by means of hydraulic fracturing, no such licence could be granted. Uh, Deputy Wallace raised concerns about the activities of the Petroleum Affairs Division of my department are inconsistent with the promotion of climate change. I would like to clarify in this regard that the Energy White Paper aligns energy policy, climate action policy and exploration policy, leading the transition to a low carbon economy by 2050. And that is a transition uh, phase. It is important to note, however, that there will remain a significant role, for example, for natural gas as a transition fuel. If Ireland manages to benefit from the level of offshore exploration in the Atlantic margin in terms of another hydrocarbon find, then that could have a substantial positive impact on the Irish economy, uh, such as reduced spending on imports, increased exchequer resources for services and investment, and more opportunities for employment and local businesses. And whilst I do acknowledge that there are concerns around the impact of surveying, exploring and potentially drilling in an area of large natural habitat, issues raised by Deputy Boyd Barrett, I believe the Department's approach to understanding and managing biodiversity impacts has been hugely successful. Uh, there is collaboration with the National Parks and Wildlife and the Observe programme, a pioneering piece of work uh, to acquire new baseline data at the aim of uh, filling existing data gaps relating to protecting marine species and uh, sites in key offshore uh, basins. As indicated in the second reading of this bill, uh, it is my view that considerations surrounding the use of new technologies should be scientifically examined and peer re reviewed, as was done uh, at committee stage uh, in relation to the onshore prohibition of fracking. The EPA led research programme, um, as I said, did preci precisely this. And the findings, together with Deputy McLaughlin's bill, uh, were scrutinised by the Joint Oireachtas Committee um, 
and I would like to, to emphasise that there is no scientific research of this type of which I am aware relating to the offshore or due to any grounds for concern in this uh, regard. The advancement of this legislation is a real testament to cross-party cooperation. Again, I would like to compliment uh, Deputy McLaughlin and the support uh, of the House in passing this bill and also the campaigning uh, groups that are here in the gallery uh, both today and at other stages of the bill. So I would like to uh, welcome the passing of the bill. Now that completes uh, the debate on the fifth stage. So I must put the question. The question is that the bill do now pass. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. So the bill will now be sent to the Shannad. We move on to the Heritage Bill. As an exceptional measure, we'll accept the applause because you come from the north coming from the northwest. A former European a former European constituency, somebody told me.